bringing the worldwide community together for one more week. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the 2021 Noble CrossFit Games pre-show presented by Ram. I'm Sean Woodland with four-time CrossFit Games athlete Annie Sakamoto. Want to welcome in all our friends from across the pond who get to watch us live and want to wish everybody here in the United States who may or may not be at work trying to look busy right now. And I can't believe that we are actually in the final week. I know. This is a little bittersweet for me, mm -hmm. Sean. I, I mean, I can't believe this is already the last week. This is already our last show. Well, don't say that. I know. <laughs> uh, but I am so excited mm -hmm. for these two matchups that we have tonight and, of course, to see what the finale workout is going to be. We have three very fit individuals who will be part of our main event. The three Panchik brothers are here. They're in the building warming up right now, and they arrived in style in the Ram trucks that they have been driving around all week since they got here. In fact, they even brought them to Annie's gym to get some fitness in as well. So looking forward to seeing the three Panchik brothers throw down today. Here's what we have on tap. We have the pregame show that's going on right now. Then, of course, at noon Pacific time, the final announcement, 21.3. Then the three Panchik brothers going head to head to head. After that, bonus fitness, 21.3 for Akaz, Sam Briggs, and Easy Muhammad throwing down. But before we look ahead to 21.3, let's take a look back at 21.2 and look at the top scores for the women, and there are 10 different countries represented on this leaderboard. Emma Carey leading the way. The youngster, 8 minutes, 51 seconds, and then Kristen Holta just 7 seconds behind her. But Emma Carey, 16 years old. And we're starting to see these kids who have the four or five years of experience before they hit 18 now show up on the leaderboard and they are good. Right, and CrossFit Games actually posted a video of Emma Carey doing it in 2017 at 12 years old with a 20 pound dumbbell. She did it in 1044, still a blazing time. She goes and PRs it just four years later, 15 pounds heavier with almost a two minute faster PR. I love that. She walks away like it was no big deal. But I would like it to note that Kristen Holtz is second fastest at 8.58, and she's two times Emma Carey's age. Pretty impressive. Currently tied for third in the overall leaderboard. So Carey is your leader with 15 total points. But look who's in second. <laughs> Four-time defending fittest woman on earth. And Probably not good news for everybody because I don't think she really trained for this Open and here she is in second place. Right, and you know, for the four times that she's won the game, she's never won the Open, but she could possibly do it this year, pretty much like you said, Sean, on accident. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the field should be pretty nervous if Tia Claire Toomey is winning the Open, not intending to win the Open. So, you know, kind of bodes not so well yeah. for the rest of the competition for the rest of the season. The woman who is leading the Open right now is Emma Carey, and she is joining Rory McKernan. Thank you, Sean, and uh, Emma, thank you for joining us. So excited to have you. Uh, congratulations on your standing so far. I, I have to know, you can, you. yeah, you've competed as a teenager, so you're no stranger to competition, but how does it feel to be up on top of the overall leaderboard in front of a name like Tia Claire Toomey? It feels amazing. Um, I am so proud of where I'm at right now, but nowhere close to satisfied. Um, I just believe that the best is still to come for me, and I'm so excited for all of the hard work and just for what I believe is in my future. I love to hear it, and I love to hear the confidence as well. Tell me, we don't know what the workout is, we can only assume, but is there anything that Dave Castro could announce that'll knock you down? Do you think you can hold on to that top spot? The goal is absolutely to hold on to the top spot, and I believe I can do it. Um, I am ready to see anything. I would love to see a heavy snatch I've set a goal to hit 200 before I turn 17. Wow. Um, I would also love anything with thrusters, anything with gymnastics, anything that hurts because the better I do. All right. Well, absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Congratulations on your success so far. Can't wait to watch the rest of this year and your career. Thanks, Emma. Thank you so much. Sean, I don't know, man. These darn kids in their fitness, I kind of wish they would get off my lawn because I'm starting to feel old. I don't need more kids showing me how unfit I am. <laughs> Need a moratorium on that just for a couple months, please. Let's go to the men's side now and take a look at the top scores from 21.2. And Dakota Rager at 8.48, he and Stas Solodov, the only two men to go sub nine minutes. Stas Solodov, a master's athlete, 36 years old. Colton Mertens, Scott Tetlow, and Reggie Fossa rounding out of the top five. But if you've been around the sport for a while, you take a look at that top name and it, it 
probably looks familiar to you. Right. Dakota Rager actually won 18.3. That consisted of some double unders, overhead squats, muscle ups, and guess what? Dumbbell snatches. What was so impressive with Dakota Rager was just obviously the turnover on his dumbbell, the speed on his burpees, and to be able to maintain that speed through the entire nine minutes, or less than, uh, super impressive. If you look back to 2017, there was one male and three males that were able to go sub 10 minutes. Now two males and two females go sub nine minutes. Super impressive. Overall leaderboard now after two weeks, it's Jeffrey Adler who leads Noah Olson by four points. Zach Thomas is tied with Alex Katulis out of Greece for third place and Mitchell Stevenson sits in fifth. Jorgen Carl Gumason is in sixth. But Jeff Adler is a guy who really came on the scene last year. And when you talk about possible contenders for the top spot on the podium at the games this year, his name doesn't immediately come up, but maybe it should. Right, I think it really should, Sean, because you know, you look last year, he finished fifth worldwide in the Open. He was 26th in 2019, so he is steadily moving up the Open leaderboard. And like you said, he was fifth. He was one of only five gentlemen that qualified to make it to Aromas. So while he's not the first name that we think of, he's definitely a name that we should start to to incorporate in our lexicon when we're talking about the top male athletes. Yeah, unfortunately, we can't have fans here uh, in Scotts Valley, but we have the next best thing. The virtual fans are back. For more on that, here's Derek Forrest. Yeah, let's take a look at that fan wall. You see people from everywhere. I see a couple of people from Brazil, Canada, UK. I think we also have someone from Ireland. Obviously, CrossFit spans the globe, and we see affiliates everywhere, and one man out of the UK, Wales to be exact, stepped into his affiliate and found out that the CrossFit methodology is changing his life. Nikki Brazier has that story. Hey Derek, thanks. Tom Downey is on a mission to save his own life. After an injury slowed him down and poor diet habits added up, he decided to reach out to CrossFit Cardiff in Wales to help him regain control and make some serious changes. Like most teenage young men, he liked to paint, he ate loads. In university, I really started to develop some bad habits. Eating too much, eating too much of the wrong thing. It was bad for a long time. It was really bad. Um, and there was so much, I had so much denial around it. And he, he liked to party, he liked to go out, liked to be sociable. And before you know it, you've, you've got a situation and you can't always then find your way out of it. How do you fix a problem? I mean, you've got to you've got to know you've got one in the first place. Surely, like you've got to you've got to address it head on. So I was sort of mulling over things one day. Um, I messaged Conroy, the coach here. Um, I said to him, "Look, I want to get back on track with things." So Tom's fundamental goal was that he wanted to, to burn fat. That was, his, that was his goal. But I think I was very conscious um, to not overload him and be like, okay, this is what we're gonna do fitness-wise. This is what I need to do nutritionally. This is what I want you to do in terms of your sleep. He's got a lot going on in terms of kind of medical professionals as well, kind of helping him with his journey that I think he came to me to help him try and get more consistency with his fitness. And that's what I focused on. We are so thrilled to have Tom with us now. Tom, welcome. Tell us, when you knew that you needed to make a change, what sparked you to join a CrossFit gym specifically? Uh, what sparked me was my mum, Ellen Downey, who may or may not be watching this, um, she joined the same gym that I joined, and she lost an incredible amount of weight and fixed so, you know, essentially so many issues that she had in the past. And I saw that, right, if, if mum can do it, I can do it, and and then from there on in, I just I sent that message. I took that first step, and I've had a few hiccups, but I'm I'm really on the road to getting there. No, it's so funny you spoke about your loving yet dysfunctional CrossFit family. That's a community that's also your literal family, apparently. How have they been supporting you during the Open? Uh, it, it's honestly the amount of support I've had from ev everybody in in the gym has just just been 
second to none. Um, ever since my film came out, I think it was Dan Jones gave me the nickname Hollywood, um, which which <laughs> which is just stuck ever since, and I I can't seem to escape it. But the the support I have, um, whether it's through the lads. Um, WhatsApp group, whether it's through messages I get from uh, on, on Instagram, uh, when I see people in person, you know, the, the few that we are allowed to see in this sort of weird time we live in, th the support is what keeps me going. And if, if I didn't have it, I'd have packed it in a long time ago. Well, congratulations so far on everything that you have accomplished. Good luck in the rest of the Open, and we'll send it round back to Sean. Thank Thanks, Nikki. You get to see people transform their lives on a daily basis. What's it like for you in your gym getting to help people just live better? Well, I mean, I think this is really where the magic of CrossFit lies, right, Sean? It's not just the methodology of CrossFit, it's the community. That's where all the magic is. And so um, to see, we, you know, we've seen so many people walk in our gym and, you know, the head's down, shoulders are forward. And, you know, whether it's in three weeks or three months, to see somebody walk shoulders back, head up, uh, there's nothing like it. And really, for me, that's the greatest gift um, I've ever been given, you know, outside of my, my kids and my family. Um, I just can't imagine doing anything else in my life that would be so fulfilling. Yeah, people like Tom are an integral part of the global CrossFit community, and there have been some affiliates around the world who are doing a great job of getting people involved in the open, and no one is doing it better than CrossFit Karaje in Madrid. 248 of their members have signed up. CrossFit Reykjavik second at 240. And then you have Brazil, China, and New Zealand also on that list. If you are looking for an affiliate and looking to get involved in this great worldwide community, you can go to maps.crossfit.com, map.crossfit.com in order to find that. And also want to remind you that this is the 2021 Noble CrossFit Games pre-show presented by Ram, the only truck brand to win Motor Trend Truck of the Year three years in a row. The main event tonight, the Pantic Brothers, but we also, as I said, have bonus fitness workout for a cause between a former champion and a former games athlete. Easy Muhammad and Sam Briggs will be throwing down. Sam won the Cross the Games in 2013, and Easy has been to the games two times in his career, and you know, two very different athletes here as far as their abilities, and, and I'm guessing that what they want to hear Dave Castro announce could not be different tonight. Right, so Elijah Muhammad is an athlete that actually started CrossFit with Rich Froning at yeah. Tennessee Tech. He's been to the Cross, CrossFit Games, like you said, Sean, two times, once in 2015 and once in 2017, and he is definitely known for his Olympic weightlifting skills. Most of his best finishes at the Games have included a heavy barbell, and I would only imagine that on his second open announcement this afternoon, he is hoping for another heavy barbell. And then, like you said, we have the kind of the opposite athlete here in Samantha Briggs. She is the 2013 champ. She's also earned herself spirit of the games uh, at, the, at the CrossFit Games. This is her seventh open announcement. And we haven't seen a pull-up bar yet. And if you're thinking about a pull-up bar, there's no way you <laughs> cannot think about Samantha Briggs. She is an absolute ninja mm -hmm. on that bar. And as you, since we haven't seen it, you know, we're assuming we might see it, in which case I would imagine Sam will do very well. Now, both of these athletes are here representing some fantastic organizations, and if you want to learn more about them, here's where you can go. Uh, Easy Muhammad here representing a foundation he started, Project Onyx, Project Onyx DSM.com. Sam Briggs here representing the Out Foundation, that's the OutFoundation.org. And Ben Smith wanted to be here, unfortunately wasn't feeling well, could not travel, but we wanted to give you the information on his cause, it's Krypton's Compete for a Cure.com. Sam and Easy Muhammad are on the competition floor, and they are with Roy McKernan. Uh, thank you, Sean. Two of my favorite athletes, two of my favorite people, just for how amazing they are, and uh, really living legend here that I got with me. So I don't care what comes out of the hopper. Excited to see Sam take it on. But you've done these open announcements before. Tonight, it's got a little bit of a twist. You're doing it for a cause. How does that change things for you? I think it just makes it a little bit more special. Uh, hopefully raise a little bit of awareness and hopefully raise some money for the foundation. So it's not just about me right now. <laughs> <laughs> you got something else to think about during the middle of the workout. What can you tell me about the Out Foundation? How'd you get involved? What's it all about? Uh, yeah, uh, they uh, asked me before the Open if I'd like to represent them. And it's just about trying to get people involved and making the sport as inclusive as possible. Great. Well, we hope that this will bring attention to it and, and uh, get some more people involved. Easy, it's been a crazy year, man, and you made some lemonade out of the lemons. Tell me about Project Onyx, how it came to be. Uh, yeah, so basically it was an organization we started just to 
close the health disparity gaps uh, in the black and brown community. And uh, we started with CrossFit because we're CrossFitters. Um, so we just thought it would be the best way to um, introduce it to the CrossFit space and to the kids. All right, we'll get to catch up with you guys a lot more on the Cool Down Show, but can't wait to watch you work out. Thanks for being here. All right, my friends, of course, we're going to get to see these two legendary athletes take on 21.3. But first, we'll see the Panchik brothers. And with more on that is Derek Forrest. Yeah, thanks, Ro. As the saying goes, good things come in threes. And so do the bad. The good, the Panchik brothers, well, they're in the top 35 in the open after the first two workouts. Scott Panchik, a mainstay at the games, while his brothers are slowly creeping up on his heels. And that's bad news for the rest of the field. If you have a brother, you definitely have a rival. But you also have a best friend. It's pretty easy to tell when the Panchik brothers are rivals and when they're friends. It all depends on if they're in the gym or not. There definitely is a, a, a switch that flips um, whenever I'm going up against those two especially. None of us ever want to lose. So it really pushes us kind of to the next level where it's like, okay, what, what can I do to be better than those guys? As is often the case, the younger brothers are chasing the eldest. Scott Panchik is nine years older than his siblings. He's been to the CrossFit Games eight times, and he has only finished outside the top six once. But there is one big thing missing from his resume, a CrossFit Games medal. For me to win a CrossFit Games medal would mean the world to me. It's something I've been working on for the last 10 years of my life. I know it would mean a lot to me, but it also would mean a lot to the network of people that have helped me get to where I am today. It's just something that I want to bring home for everyone. Saxon and Spencer are starting to catch up with Scott. Saxon has three CrossFit Games appearances under his belt. Spencer has yet to make it to Madison, but looks to be on the right track. Both are hoping to line up against their older brother on CrossFit's biggest stage. Nobody wants to see his brothers succeed more than Scott. But that family loyalty has limits. Listen, so the one thing that I can promise you is that when my brothers and I get on the floor, it's, it's go time. Uh, the blinders are up for me regardless of who's in the lane and the left and the right of me and I got one one focus point and that's finishing the workout as fast and as efficiently as I can. The Panchik brothers will always be great friends, but it's very likely that this is the season they become even bigger rivals. There's a whole lot of fitness in the Panchik family. Scott leads the way with those eight games appearances and Saxon of course has been there uh, three times, finished in the top 10 last year. Best game finish was fourth for Scott Panchik. More on that in a second. And of course, Spencer's still looking for his uh, first appearance uh, at the CrossFit game. And hopefully he can make that happen this year. But let's talk with Scott, uh, talk about Scott. His resume, you look at it and you say, okay, consistency, awesome. But the thing that takes it from there to one of the best is that if he could get that games medal. Right. I think it's really safe to say, Sean, that Scott Panchik is one of the absolute best crossfitters that has yet to stand on the games podium. And like you said, of eight appearances, he only has one finish outside of the top 10. He is so consistently really good. But like you said, what he needs to be is great. Well, this last year, he actually trained with Rich and the Mayhem team. And up until that point, he thought he was going to be on the team. Uh, the rules came out. It, it was apparent that he wasn't going to be able to be on the team. But he has said that he is a different athlete because of the training that he did with Rich. It would be great to see him actually be on that podium because I think, again, of all the athletes that have earned uh, their right to be on that podium but have not yet been there, he is definitely the one. And sometimes we forget that he has been in the game since 2012, and you look at what he has accomplished since then. Uh, fourth in the Open twice. He's won regionals before. Had that great matchup with Rich Froning a few years back there at the old uh, Central East Regional. Been to the games eight times, and he's been inside the top six seven of those times and fourth 
2012, 2013, and again uh, in 2019. Now, his brothers look like they are following very closely in his footsteps. You know, not there yet, but definitely on the right path. Right. Saxon has already qualified for the games three times, 2018, 2019, and in 2020. He was one of 10 athletes in 2019 that made that elusive final cut. He finished ninth that year, and he was actually the only pan chick to compete in the 2020 games. He was obviously out after stage one, but still super impressive to make that top 30. And then we look at his brother Spencer. So if you look at their numbers, they're all very similar, Scott, Saxon, and Spencer. But Spencer admittedly goes out a little too fast on workouts, and that could be what has caused him to not have yet qualified for the games. Uh, both boys, both Saxon and Spencer, have said that this year they got a coach for the first time. Previously, they were doing their own programming, and that they've learned so much from having a coach. So this could be the year that we see all three Panchik brothers at the CrossFit Games. What do you think they want to hear Dave Castro announce tonight? I think after looking at uh, some of the stats that we were given, I think they would love to see a heavy barbell. So, you know, funny enough, they have listed clean and jerks that are all five pounds apart. I believe it's 360, 365, right. and 370. So, uh, you know, a heavy clean and jerk would be super fun to see these boys do together. Well, we have a lot of great partners who are helping us uh, put on uh, this live open announcement. One of them uh, is Romwad. They have been the official mobility sponsor of CrossFit and the CrossFit Games since 2016. For more information, you go to romwad.com slash the open and you can get 50% off your first month. Once again, that's romwad.com slash the open for 50% off your first month. This is a big community event, but the open is also the beginning of the game season. Many of us, myself included, will be done after this week. Uh, then we have the rest of the season. So the quarterfinals, they start on April 9th. Team quarterfinals are also on uh, April 9th. The semifinals then, that'll be fun to watch. The last chance qualifier, that is new this year. And then the whole season culminates in Madison, Wisconsin at the games July 27th through August 1st. And if you haven't had the chance to be there, it, there is nothing like that atmosphere. Right. I mean, this is, first of all, this is the Super Bowl of our sport, right? right? But the best part about it is uh, that it's not just one event. There's multiple events. There's multiple venues. Uh, there's all kinds of other activities. There's shopping. Uh, there's amazing food. And my husband said it best one year when he went to the games. He said, that is the fittest and mm -hmm. funnest fans I have ever seen at any sporting event. Um, I, I, yeah, I think it's not, it's not like it's just an event. It's an experience when mm -hmm. you're there. And when you're on the floor, you, we're hoping you know, fans are going to be able to be there. But as a competitor, what does it mean to have that crowd cheering for you? There's nothing like it. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, the rush of adrenaline. Um, and we've seen it in a lot of people's performances. I mean, I would say even for myself, when you hear the crowd behind you, there, it feels like there's nothing that you can't do. And again, what I love about CrossFit is, um, you know, obviously people have their favorites, but it's not like a football game where people are trash talking anybody. Mm -hmm. It's Everybody wants everybody to do well, and there is nothing like being in the stadium, um, you know, or on the field and seeing everybody root for one person or, you know, for everybody yeah. on the field. It's pretty, it's pretty unbelievable. And we get to have a lot of fun actually getting to, you know, to be there and work, but we do have the most fun when we get a break. We yeah. get to go, you know, see Vendor Village. We get to watch some of the action live. We get to interact. Uh, yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, interact with the fans. Food, yeah. And I, if you haven't been there, you got to go. You got to check it out. Madison, Wisconsin does a fantastic job of rolling out the red carpet. And if you go downtown, you know, you see crowds of stuff everywhere. You see people, you know, in their gear at restaurants and yep. stuff. It's a, it's a great oh, the menus have, you know, mm -hmm. all yeah. They've renamed all of their food to be, you know, CrossFit friendly. So, yeah, and tickets are still available, but we got to get to first things first. We got to find out what 21.3 is going to be. We will have the official announcement from Dave Castro coming up next. The CrossFit Games are returning to Madison, Wisconsin, and you can be there to see all the action. Ticket packages are on sale now. Choose between festival only or a festival plus coliseum package to ensure that you are on hand to witness the best athletes in the world compete for the title of fittest on earth. Be part of the celebration live. Head to games.crossfit.com to purchase your tickets today. We've had something old and we've had something new, but we haven't had enough. 
one workout remains. Dave Castro serves up 21.3 in a star-studded affair. A sibling rivalry, a powerful games veteran, and a former champion will all be on display. The community is here. We've pushed ourselves. We've gutted through the workouts. We haven't quit. It's time to face the final challenge together. Week three of the 2021 Noble CrossFit Games Open starts now. Hello, you beautiful people of the CrossFit community and welcome. I am Rory McKernan. We are live from Scotts Valley, California at CrossFit's home office. And we are so glad you are here for the announcement of Open Workout 21.3 presented by Ramwad. Now, a very special welcome to our global audience, as you know. For the first time in CrossFit Games history, we're broadcasting midday here on the west coast of the United States so that you all could join us live. And we are so glad that you have from wherever you're watching from. Now, tonight, we've got an amazing athlete lineup for you. We've got the legendary Sam Briggs, who will be on the competition floor with Easy Muhammad. They're both fighting for a cause. We'll tell you more about that and those athletes later, because first, three men with one name. We've got the Panchik brothers in the house. Spencer Scott and Saxon are all here. Uh, Spencer, I was looking at your Instagram and you said that uh, bonds are forged through adversity. I wanna hear kind of how training together in this competition atmosphere brings you closer to your brothers. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's just some, some days it goes good, some days it goes bad, but um, you always have somebody there to kind of bounce, bounce ideas off of and lift you back up. So it's awesome. All right, Scott, we'll come back to you. I'm going to go to Saxon next uh, because there's a little bit of chirping, too. I was looking at your Instagram, and you're like, you know, you got Spencer in the background. You're like, yeah, waiting on Spencer again. So <laughs> how, how much fun do you guys have with each other, and how important is that? Yeah, I mean, I, I think you never want to forget to have fun. And um, as long as you keep having fun, I think you can do this for a really long time. And um, I think you never want to lose sight of that. Yeah, I love it. Uh, big brother. How crazy is it for you to have led the way and see these guys actually coming up and filling some of the very big shoes that you put and put out in front of them? This is the dream we've been working towards, and we're about to live it out this year, so let's go. Yeah, sounds like everybody wants to go, right? So let's make this official, my friends. For the last time in 2021, here is the official announcement of the workout. 21.3 is going to take us on a little trip to the chalkboard. It's going to start with 15... front squats. Immediately following the 15 front squats, you'll do 30 toe to bar. Once the 30 toe to bar is finished, you'll then move to 15 thrusters. The weight is 95 pounds for the men, 65 for the women, for both bars. You will then repeat this two more times. 15, front squats, 30, 15, thruster, 15, front squat, 30, 15, thruster. Notice the bar movements stay the same. But the movement in the middle, the 30 toe to bar, that will not stay the same. After this first section, the 30 now becomes chest to bar pull ups. On the third round, day 30 becomes bar muscle-ups. Twenty-one point three is fifteen front squats, thirty toe to bar, fifteen thruster. At this point, you take a fixed one minute rest, forced one minute rest, before continuing on with 15 front squats, 30 chest to bar pull-ups, 
15 thrusters. And once again, another point where you will take a forced one minute rest from when you finish this work. And then you will do 15 front squats, 30 bar muscle ups, and 50 thrusters. 21.3 is for time. with a 15 minute time cap. That just so gross. Thanks for nothing, Dave Castro. So some of this we thought we saw coming, just of our pull-ups and thrusters. A lot of you guys were talking about that. Nobody was talking about the bar movement moving and shape. But Rory, I'm not finished. Of course you're not. I still need to introduce 21.4. Ladies and gentlemen, 21.4 is the following complex. Deadlift, into clean, into hang clean, into jerk. Twenty-one point four is immediately following twenty-one point three. If you finish it in a time with a time, you then have seven minutes to complete twenty-one point four. If you hit the time cap of fifteen minutes, you then have seven minutes from there to complete twenty-one point four. Ladies and gentlemen, this is twenty-one point three. That is twenty-one point four. This is the CrossFit Open. Have fun. Uh -huh. All right, I like that a little bit better, actually. Eat it, Boz. All right, so we got the heavy barbell that some people were looking for, but you've got to earn it. And there is so much going on here. Let's talk about 21.3 first. We've got force to rest. We have different time domains, and we've got movements that change. The standards will change as well. Pay attention to that. And then, of course, on 21.4, there's some considerations there, and your judge is going to have to really be paying attention to that time domain as well. So as always, guys, you have to check the standards. Games.crossfit.com is where you can find all of the standards you could chew on and the official score sheets. But for right now, we're going to have a look at the standards for 21.3 and 4 to count. It needs to look like this. CrossFit Games Open Workout 21.3 is for time. Round one is front squats, toes to bar, and thrusters, followed by a one minute rest. Round two is front squats, chest to bar pull ups, and thrusters, followed by a one minute rest. Round three is front squats, bar muscle ups, and thrusters. This workout has a 15 minute time cap. 21.4 begins immediately upon completing or reaching the time cap for 21.3. Your score will be the total time taken to complete the workout, including the rest periods. If you do not complete the workout, then your score will be the total number of repetitions completed before the 15 minute cap. For the official movement standards, download the corresponding 21.3 scorecard and workout descriptions from games.crossfit.com. CrossFit Games Open Workout 21.4 begins immediately following 21.3. For heaviest load, complete the complex of one deadlift, one clean, one hang clean, and one jerk. There is a seven minute time cap on this workout. Your score will be the heaviest weight successfully completed within the seven minute window. For the official movement standards, as well as information about each division and workout variation, download the corresponding 21.4 scorecard and workout descriptions from games.crossfit.com. Well, that escalated quickly. Oh. Sean Woodland and Neil Maddox, your eight time CrossFit uh, Games athlete joining me. Okay, let's start with let's start with 21.3. Now that you've had some time to chew on that a little bit, what do you think the crux of that workout's going to be? Well, when you look at 21.3, uh, I don't think the front squats are going to be any bit of a hassle for any of these athletes. What it's going to come down to is the gymnastics movements. When we look at the gymnastics movements, it's going to be a big time gripping workout. You're going in the first round, you're 30 toes to bar. Then you go to thrust. Then you have your minute rest. 
people are going to recover real easily in that minute rest. But then the next round, you go into those 30 chest to bar pull ups. Now all of a sudden, the gymnastics movements are getting a little bit more complicated. But then on that last round, you're going to have to hit 30 bar muscle ups. And that's where I think the workout's going to come down to. It's going to come down to whoever's fast and efficient, whoever can go unbroken in this workout, it has a major chance of winning this workout. But the biggest thing that I see is who's going to hold on on those last round of thrusters because I think those thrusters are going to get real after those barred muscle ups. You mentioned grip. That's clearly going to be a factor when you immediately now have to go into a heavy barbell. How do you deal with that? Well, the biggest thing is if these are, well, me being a heavier athlete, if I was attacking this workout, I'd have to probably break up some of these workouts due to a uh, break up, especially my chest to bar. Well, chest to bar pull ups, I'd go unbroken, but when it went to the bar muscle ups, I have to think about efficiency on those, and I'd have to probably do those in fives or break them up even more than that. Just because of the simple fact that I want to make sure that I have enough grip strength when it comes to that heavy barbell. And as you all know, I love heavy weight, so I can't yeah. <laughs> wait to see 21.4, especially what these guys throw down when it comes to lifting a heavy deadlift in that complex. So I'm really excited for this workout. Yep, you get your heavy barbell, but you got to earn it. Well, one of the men who will be facing this workout is Noah Olson. He is currently in second place overall uh, on the Open leaderboard, trying to win the Open for the first time since 2016, and he is with Rory McKernan. Hey, Sean, he'll be taking it on, and I think he's somebody who will certainly excel at this. Noah, first of all, man, great to see you, man. Thanks for being here. Romac, it is my pleasure. How are we doing out there? We're doing great, bro. We're doing great. And uh, listen, again, your name pops to, to the top of my mind when I think about this workout, and you're so high up on the leaderboard right now. I want to get your reaction, 21.3 and 4. What do you think of it? Man, I really appreciate that. I am excited seeing this one. I think there are a lot of really cool little nuances to it. I'm um, getting even more excited as I'm looking at my phone. There are little texts <laughs> popping up in the top corner from my training partners that are all saying, let's go, this is sick. <laughs> so uh, we've got a really great environment here at Training Think Tank, and uh, I think it's going to really get crazy in here tomorrow. I'm excited for it. Yeah, absolutely, man. I, I can't wait to see how you do. Uh, you know, listen, I can remember it like it was almost yesterday where you were a volunteer who came into the games and you were just a kid, but you've been in the game now for some time. I know that that makes recovery just as important as the workouts themselves. So I kind of want to hear about your recovery protocol and how you're managing to, to keep yourself in the right spot in between workouts. Absolutely, man. Recovery is huge, especially as I'm getting a bit older. I'll be 30 this year going into the games. And uh, a couple of things that I've really gotten dialed in, I've got the whoop that kind of gives me all my data. And believe it or not, for the first time, maybe ever, I've had seven days straight of being in the green. Nice. And one of the things that helps me do that is Ramwad. Um, I've been living and dying by Ramwad while we've gotten through these first two workouts. The uh, upper body soreness of the first one and then the low back hamstring soreness of the second one. I've been stretching it all out and feeling good. Hey, well, welcome to 30, because at 39, uh, getting into the green is like winning the lottery for me. It happens like never. Um, so let's talk about the big, the big picture of the Open. Let's, or sorry, the big picture of the season. I'd love to know what your aspirations are for yourself this year. Yeah, absolutely. I, my goal is and has always been to win the CrossFit Games. The Open is obviously a step along the way. I was fortunate enough to win it in 2016, but... That year, I ended up having my worst finish at the CrossFit Games. So knowing that, um, I tried to put very little emphasis on the Open this year. Happened to be sitting in, I think, second place going into the final workout. So if I do have a solid performance on this final one and pull off another win, so be it. But that's definitely not the goal. We're trying to set the intention of peaking much later in the season at the CrossFit Games. Yeah, I love it. And, and with one last question, I just kind of want to pick your, your analytical brain. And as you've looked at 21.3 into 21.4, is it too early or have you kind of broken it down? How would you take it on? Yeah, uh, I think the fact that there are the one minute rest periods in between each workout allows you to really get after it and potentially be able to do all three of them unbroken. I don't think you want to be conservative going into the final heavy barbell. You're just going to have to work with what you've got at that point. So I'm going to blast it and hopefully hang on and lift some heavy weight at the end. All right, Noah, call it. We've got Saxon, we've got Spencer, and we've got Scott. Who are you going oh, with? Oh, man, don't do that to me. <laughs> um, I'm going to say that they come in a three-way tie across oh. the board on the Metcon, and then uh, I think Scotty is probably going to put up the most weight at the end there. Call him the three-way tie. To all of them. Man, and then you can just run for president with that political answer. That was perfect, right down the pipe. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Noah, thanks for Keep being here, man. Neutral. Always great to see you. Thanks, guys. Good luck.
Thanks to Noah, and as always, we want to thank Noble. Noble is the official title sponsor of the 2021 CrossFit Games. You can visit nobleproject.com slash CrossFit to pick up your CrossFit essentials for the season. Looks like we are just moments away from competition over here on the field of play, so we're going to step out and welcome in our global commentary team as we approach 21.3. The 21.3 Open Announcement is brought to you by Ramwad. Unleash your call. Noble. Just the horns. And Woo. Know yourself with 24-7 fitness insights from Woo. The sibling rivalry will be on full display here. The Panchik brothers going head to head to head as we kick off the final week of the 2021 Noble CrossFit Games Open. Sean Woodland, an eight-time CrossFit Games athlete, Neil Maddox here. We just heard Noah Olson's prediction, so let's get your predictions. We'll start with 21.3. Well, the biggest thing is I'm a favor of the OGs, and Scott Panchik is someone who I got to compete with for a few years and stuff like that. So I'm going to be pulling for Scott for 21.3 and 21.4. The reason why I'm pulling for him is, one, he's an older bro. He's the <laughs> one who's taught both of them pretty much what they know. And when he's on the big stage right now, I don't think he wants to let anyone down, and he wants to show that he's a bigger brother. And knowing that I have little brothers, I never want to see my little brother beat me in a workout. Spencer and Saxon both warming up here. And if you're trying to tell them apart right now, that's Spencer lifting. Good. Yes. I had a 50-50 chance I got it right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so what I realized is Spencer has a little bit of a, a longer hairdo, and it's mm -hmm. combed over to the side, and then his brother has a little bit shorter. So whenever you guys are looking for Spencer, look for someone who has a little bit of a longer hairdo. You've actually competed against Scott back in 2012. What was it like going up against him? It was his first year at the Games. Well, I, it's kind of funny. I was talking to Scott today. I'm all, hey, Scott, how do you feel? I'm all, you're the same age I was when I was going into the games. <laughs> I'm all, you're the same age where you are right now. Mm -hmm. and, and matter of fact, Scott was all, yeah, I was the same age as my brothers right now. So if, if we go off the tail of the tape there, then youth might be taken over. And, the you know, the OGs might have to hold off a little bit until that youth era, you know, gets up to their age. What stood out about Scott when you first saw him at the games in 2012? What stood out about him was uh, his calm demeanor. Not only that, he's just a friendly, nice dude. And the biggest thing that I noticed is that he came in with a football background very similar to mine, and he came in with just a, a, a wheelhouse. Like, he just has some great aerobic capacity. He can run. And typically when you see a football player, you think fast twitch, fast twitch, fast mm -hmm. twitch. But, man, he actually shows that he demonstrates some slow twitch because he can take long runs. He can take a swim. And so he's pretty well-rounded athlete. That's why he was able to get himself close to the podium that first year he was competing in the games and stay within the top ten over the years, or basically over the course of his career what do you think he needs to do to make this the year that he finally winds up on the podium well i think he set himself up really well why do i think he set himself up well is because he went to mayhem he was around rich he was around that group over there mm -hmm. and when you're around that group you have champions all around there matt frazier was out there tia to me i don't know how much they all interacted but they're all in the same area code and by them being all in the same area code right there you're going to be gaining a wheelhouse a wheelhouse of knowledge but not only that that knowledge that you get you can take it here to the open and then just move it forward to obviously get himself on the podium. And take a look at uh, Saxon Panchik, and he has three games appearances under his belt. His brother Spencer has yet to get his first. What do they need to change to get to the level where Scott is right now? You know, I don't think they need to change anything because I think whatever they have done in the past, they are already, <laughs> are already creeping up that leaderboard, and they're already on pace to get their self into the games. Now, the Open, they look really, I mean, their positioning right now in the Open is great. Now, if they can keep that same positioning and move up and all stay in the top 40 for the next round of qualifiers, they're all going to yeah. make it into the games. It's going to be fun watching them throw down. They are ready. The equipment is ready. I hope you're ready. Dave Castro looks ready. So let's go down to the competition floor for the official start of 21.3. Ten seconds. Good luck. Three, two, one, go! 21.3 is officially underway, and keep an eye on the far right of your screen. That's where Spencer Panzik is, and he is admittedly a guy who likes to come out hot. Scott said he was probably going to come out hot, so don't be surprised if he is your early leader. There are 60 repetitions in every round, and then there's that mandatory one-minute rest. 
What I really like is the speed of Scott directly in the middle. He just came out really fast. He's like, okay, Spencer, you like to go fast? I can go fast, too. And he's going rep for rep with his brother right now, actually edging him on that toes to bar. What I really like about to, uh, Scott's toes to bar, if you notice, you probably don't notice it when you guys are watching it here, but when he's pulling his legs back, he's just not letting his legs drop back. He's whipping his legs back and pulling his legs forward, allowing him to kip right into that toes to bar, allowing him to edge his other brothers right now. The 45 rep mark, that is when they will move back to the barbell for the thrusters. And then when they complete that, it's that one minute rest. Like I said before, Scott, older brother going out, he's all, nope, my younger brothers aren't going to catch me. Now I'm curious to see how he attacks this, these thrusters because you got to be fast and efficient on these thrusters. And what I mean about Scott, he's in the middle going right now. Look at how fast he's pushing it up, pulling that bar down into that squat. Just look at the cycle rate versus him and his brother right next to him. And I count all that cycle rate. I think that experience came directly from all the competitions. Eight, game, eight games appearances, man. Final couple reps now for Scott Panchik. And he is done. Looks like he came in at about 131. Spencer is done at 138. And now Saxon done at 139. Right, like I said, that OG Scott Panchik came out. You're looking at the athlete in the middle. He came out blazing. Remember, everyone was saying Spencer always comes out hot, but Scott came out hot because he knows that experience, those open experiences are really paying off for him right now. Scott will be the first man to start the second part of this workout, the 15 front squats, then the 30 chest bar pull-ups, and then 15 thrusters. He's going to get going about 231. Spencer will be right behind him seven seconds later at 138. This is unofficial. And then Saxon about a second behind him. So the younger brothers essentially starting at the same time the biggest thing is scott has to well all these athletes understand now they're racing their self because they aren't going up against anyone else but their self so when you get that separation you're by yourself and you got to turn and burn so he still has to maintain that fast speed and he has to maintain that efficiency on that barbell and especially when he gets to those gymnastics he must go unbroken to keep that lead so scott got five reps down to those 15 front squats before spencer on the right of your screen and saxon on the left got to their barbells 75 reps and then he's to the pull-up bar is scott for 30 chest to bar pull up 15 minute time cap here should not be a problem for any of these men now scott's back to the bar right now he's doing his chest to bar pull-ups i'm curious to see if he can go on broken right now he's going to maintain that lead spencer's right on his tails right now hustle back to the bar but saxon's not far behind With 105 scott goes back for the thrusters he is leading his two brothers spencer and saxon are neck and neck right now the two of them started this round at essentially the same time what i one really second apart what i really like about scott's butterfly pull-ups look at the difference between his cycle speed versus his other brothers well actually spencer's picking up his cycle speed but if you look at his cycle speed how his legs are turning over on that on those chest of bar pull-ups really propelled him past his brothers final 15 thrusters for scott panchik in this second round of 21.3 so i want you guys to look at a difference you see scott in the middle and then look at spencer on the right spencer's pausing a little bit at the top that's going to cost him seconds if you look at scott he's pulling that barbell down there's no change in speed but if you look at spencer on the right he's pausing for a quick second and that's adding time which is causing his brother to get, create even more separation so scott is in he got done in about four minutes Saxon just finished, call it 408, and then Spencer right behind him at 409. So just like they said before, you know, Spencer went out hot. Now Saxon is starting to get his grip in this workout and he's starting to push up. So he actually passed his brother right now and he's chasing Scott. So I'm curious to see if he can try to catch Scott on this last round because these bar muscle ups, you guys don't understand how critical these bar muscle ups are in this last part right here. Panchik, Scott Panchik will get going at five minutes even. And Spencer and Saxon still separated by just one second. The biggest thing, what I'm looking at, if I'm an athlete in the field and I'm competing right now, I'm looking at these other guys and I'm looking how hard are they breathing because that's going to dictate real quick if they're going to blow up on this next round and what I need to do in order to maintain that lead if I was out there competing in that field. Scott Panchik is underway with his third and final round. 15 front squats, 30 bar muscle ups, 15 thrusters. When you look at Scott, the front squats are irrelevant. It's going to come down to the bar muscle-ups. If you look, these guys just got to get through these uh, front squats. Once they get to that bar, those bar muscle-ups, that's where you're going to really see 
technique is going to set them free, so I'm curious to see how they do. Also, if you notice something, notice right real quick, Spencer, he actually moved his hands in. He's an athlete on the right. He moved his hands in to save his arms, I believe, for the bar muscle-ups. And I want to see if that's going to pay off when he goes up against Saxon right now when they go head-to-head -head on these bar muscle-ups. Scott Panchik, the first man in the middle of the screen to get to his bar muscle-ups at 165 reps. It's back to the barbell. And remember, as soon as you are done with 21.3, your seven-minute window for 21.4 opens. Man, look at Saxon right now. He's he's catching up. He's catching up on Scott. Scott slowing down a little bit on that barbell. Scott uh, or Saxon is starting to pick up his reps big time. So I'm curious to see if he can close it out and catch his brother. Well, Scott Panzer at 147 of the 160 reps. Uh, Saxon and Spencer starting to close the gap, but Scott continues to work. He's now at 150. So well, 15 remaining here and 15 thrusters for Scott Panzer. Now Spencer on the far right of your screen and Saxon on the left they are back onto the bar now closing the gap with her older brother what i really like about what i really like about scott's uh, bar muscle up look at his flip position and when he cut uh, when he's doing his kip his feet are not flying up above his eyes he's keeping his feet low he's driving out with his hip and he's getting the most power out of his hips to get swing himself up and over that bar Eight more for Scott Panchik. 165 is the number he's got to hit on those bar muscle-ups. And then it's 15 final thrusters. He has been able to hold off both of his younger brothers. Spencer just got within two reps, and then he broke. And now Saxon back to work on the left side of your screen. Look at Saxon's kip. When he's kipping, he kind of actually almost floats and has to reposition himself when he gets up on the bar versus Scott and Spencer. Scott's in the middle. Spencer's on the right. Just look at how they're kipping on these bar muscle-ups. And then Saxon, who's on the far left, look at how his kip. His kip is more of like a floating glide kip, whereas, whereas uh, Scott and Spencer are more of a snapback kick. Final rep now for Scott Panchik, and he'll move back to the barbell, and that one will count. So 15 thrusters between Scott Panchik and a victory over his brothers here in 21.3. Saxon and Spencer have five left on the bar muscle-ups. I really like Scott's speed. He's maintaining that same speed that he had throughout all those thrusters right now. He's snapping up overhead, jumping out of that squat, punching it overhead, and he's pulling that bar right into him so he can create that speed and efficiency on those thrusters. Four reps remaining for Scott Panchik as he looks to take 21.3, and then he will immediately begin 21.4. Scott Panchik's done. 7.57 will be his time. So add seven minutes to that, 14.57 will be when he needs to be done with 21.4. So one thing I'd recommend, especially if you saw Spencer earlier, he kept looking over to see where his brother Saxon was. Anytime you're in a race, there's a reason why in, in horse races, they put blinders on horses because you don't want to see the other horse or be distracted. You want to stay focused on your lane and focus on what you're doing. When you stay focused, you're going to be able to turn and burn. And after all that, just two seconds separates Spencer from Saxon. 826 for Spencer, 828 for Saxon. Yeah, when I look at this, like I said, the OG came out. Scott Pancheck, he knew exactly what he needed to do to get the victory. And he said, okay, this is going to be a hit style workout, meaning that it's going to be done in two minutes or less. I have to get out and turn and burn in order for me to beat my brother. And I know that my brother Spencer likes to get out hot. And so Scott just turned on the turned on the boosters and just took the victory the times at the top of your screen will indicate when they need to be done with 21.4 so scott needs to be done at 1457 spencer needs to finish by 1526 and saxon needs to be done by 1528 as scott is loading up his bar for the complex and that looks like 100 185 85 pounds for Scott so he uh, right now guys if you're watching Scott what he's doing is he just has a warm-up weight that he wants to test the weight he's letting his heart rate come back down a little bit and he's testing the weight to see what he wants to open up with and this is where you got to be smart because you got to base it off your weakness here 
Yeah, big time. If we if we look at it, like for instance, if I was approaching this workout and I was looking at it, okay, I have a pretty strong clean. Now, what is my weakness would be my jerk. So I'd base everything based off my jerk. Now, I do know some athletes are reversed. They have a strong jerk and a weaker clean. So sometimes you gotta base it off whatever your weakness is to find a safe weight to lift. And then once you feel good and you get your starter lifts in, then you can go for those big numbers. So right now, what you, got, what you guys are looking at right now is these athletes are just basically warming up. They're just doing one or two reps of each movement. Good. Well, basically one rep just to get their self primed for basically it looks like they're going to go for either one or two lifts total. Saxon and Scott taking some workout, uh, some more work, I should say, is here are your results from 21.3. Scott Panchik, 757. And then Spencer and Saxon separated by just two seconds. I mean, when I look at when I look at 21.3, Scott put up a good time, and I'm just curious to see some of the gymnastic specialists out there who are really good on that bar. And if anyone can go unbroken on those bar muscle ups, I think we're going to have a, a slightly faster time. I know he broke up on those muscle ups a little bit, but he still looked fast and efficient. And I mean, his time is still a good time. Scott has the bar loaded at 275. The complex they need to complete without letting go of the bar is on the left of your screen. So this is his first lift right here. He had nice turnover speed on that first catch. Good, nice popping catch right there. Now let's see this jerk. Boom, right there. Punched himself under, free lift. 275 for Scott and made that look like I make 95 pounds look. Yeah, I mean, those are all those years. I don't even of make it look that good. <laughs> those are all those years of experience that he has right there coming into play right now. And the guy, you know, he's just gotten stronger over the years. And I'm really impressed with where he's at right now and what he's accomplished. Scott is the first man to get a lift on the board. 275 is opening weight, and he still has about three minutes to go. You before see, he hits his time cap. What I was what I was curious about, well, I think those guys might have felt this workout a little bit more because I was thinking that, that someone was going to get over 315 by now. But uh, like I said, I haven't tried this workout, so I don't know how it feels. So I don't know what the what the effects are going to be when I try to hit that heavier barbell on a later note. So right here, Spencer is going to approach this barbell. 255. I can't see. Oh, actually, might have some tens on there, so that might be 275 as well. Yep, 275. Okay, right there. Got to get that hook grip. Meanwhile, Saxon's on the left at 275 as well. Saxon will hit that. Now, Spencer's got to hit the jerk. And that will count for Spencer. So, 275 is the order of the day right now for the Panji brothers. And here goes Scott again, has added. What looks to be 15 pounds of that, so 290 now unofficially for Scott. The biggest thing is, if you guys just watch Scott's uh, movement, I want you to look at him in the catch. What I mean in the catch, when he was doing his clean, look at how solid he was in his catch. Now, when his brothers go, what I want you to see is how they catch the barbell in that front squat. They're a little bit not as solid in the catch, and that's affecting them as they come out of that squat. And so when they're coming out of that squat, they're getting a little bit pre-fatigued because they aren't setting that midline in that catch. Coming up on about one minute to go for Scott here in 21.4. 290 is already good for him. Both Saxon and Spencer have a little more time. They have both hit 275. Yeah, I think uh, if you really want to compete with the big dogs on this workout, because this is one of those workouts, this is one of those workouts where you're going to get a creeper, so one of those strong athletes who's in the back of the field who's going to come out of nowhere and he's just going to win this event with a big lift. Saxon looks like he has loaded his bar to 295. Spencer on the right, adding more weight to his bar, and Scott in the middle of your screen. So one thing I would have done right off the bat if I had a, if I was doing this, if Scott is barely putting the change plates on right now, I would have had the change plates on at the beginning. So right when I went to large, uh, load my bar, the first thing I'm putting on are the change plates. Then I put my big plates after that because I never have to worry about those small plates after. And one pound increments are the smallest increments that you can go 
in and this workout. And trust me, they make a difference. You hit a 292 versus a 290, that does make a difference and will move you up some slots. This will be the last lift for Scott. Solid foundation on that catch. Now look at his brother on the left. You see it, there's a little bit of a breakdown on his catch. Now on his second clean, same thing, speed and efficiency. A little shaky on the jerk, but still got it overhead. But Panchik will hit that. We'll wait yep. for the official count as Saxon, his younger brother, is still inside his seven minute window at 295 wow. unofficially. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I didn't think he was going to catch that lift, especially after that hand clean. He kind of, those elbows hit his knees. That's one thing you want to always avoid and stay away from. But man, he muscled through that bar and he just put it up overhead. So 311 is what Scott Panchik hit as Spencer fails that lift. So this is where I say you have to play your own ball game. I think he saw his brother over there, and then he tried to push himself to his brother, and he was already shaky after the, the first round. I would have probably did a smaller jump. Not, uh, I believe he added fives and two and a half. So I would have probably did a smaller jump. On that. And that'll do it as Scott Panchi goes two for two. So 311 pounds was his official lift on that final attempt. Spencer wasn't able to hit his final lift, so he will stick at 275, and Saxon was able to hit 295 pounds, and it was criminal how easy that man made it look. I mean, all you got to do is look at the positioning on his lifts. I mean, he had a solid catch every single time in his squat clean. Now, one thing I'd recommend is if you're doing this workout, perform a squat clean, especially when you go to those heavier lifts, because a power clean is going to be a little bit tougher and take, it, take a little bit more energy out of you. Scott Panchik bests his younger brothers in both of these workouts and you get a, not really a good sense of how tough what they just did was they're they don't look very winded and they blew through the first part of this thing 21.3 I, mean, I mean you just look at their fitness i mean these guys have been to the crossfit games these guys are considered some of the fittest in the world right now and you can just tell look at how they took on this workout scott took on this workout he had speed and efficiency on the first part of 21.3 and then man on tw in 21.4 i remember him in 2012 his lifts have came Matter of fact, his lifts have had a major improvement from when he first started the game until where he is right now. And I'm really impressed with where he's at. And yes, he will be the person that I'm voting for to take a top spot in the CrossFit Games this year. Let's take a look back at 21.3. And Scott had the lead early and did not relinquish it. Meanwhile, his two younger brothers were neck and neck the entire time. Yeah, what I really liked is how he approached his first bar. He did a little short catch, so he didn't even stand the bar up all the way. He just caught it, got right in, down and up, and then speed and efficiency on those toes of bar. And in the second round, Scott was out first and was able to build on that lead. And once again, Saxon and Spencer separated by just one second. Yep. You know, I still think Saxon, he, how he, uh, uh, well, Spencer, how I think Spencer ended up being Saxon was he went to that modified front squat where he saved his arms just a tad bit and by allowing his arms to get saved a tad bit he was able to edge his other brother out by a couple seconds then into the final round his brothers got close to scott on the bar muscle ups but scott was able to hold them off and win 21.3 in seven minutes and 57 seconds spencer comes in two seconds ahead of Saxon and then we got to the heavy barbell and Scott Panchik wins that as well 311 pounds that was his last successful lift Saxon Panchik was able to hit 296 so he had a couple change plates hidden in there and then Spencer Panchik failed at 295 but was able to succeed at 275 pounds and, and again you look at what Scott Panchik did here and it just looked too easy oh man when he was lifting that barbell I was like man I think he undercut himself by at least 15 pounds I think he could have probably went up to at least 330 and if he does do this workout again don't be surprised to see his lifts go up on this workout for sure let's take one more look at it and scott panchik was able to hit every single lift and he started at 275 made that this is his second attempt yeah, I mean, I just love this catch. I mean, his catch, he was nice and he had his elbows nice and high. His stomach and midline were nice and tight. And then when he stood it up, he just punched himself under on that jerk. No wasted movement. 
Look at that. Fast turnover catch. Love it. Now you look at his brother on the left. You see how he breaks down a little bit? That will wear and tear on you when you break down like that. It will affect your lifts. And when you're wasting energy like that, it's going to prevent you from lifting heavier loads in the later rounds. And basketball shot rules are in effect here. As long as you start your complex before your time expires, it will count. So if you start that thing in the final second, you're good to go uh, if you succeed. And then this was Spencer's failed attempt after he hit 275. Yeah, when you just look, and I saw that earlier, his his form was just breaking down a little bit. So one thing I think he's probably going to do is go to that drawing board and really work on positional loading. A two for two for Scott Panchik over his younger brothers, and then it's Spencer who wins 21.3, and then Saxon among the younger, younger brothers wins 21.4. Rory McKernan is on the competition floor with the Panchik brothers. Yeah, thanks, John. Yeah, down here with the bros as they're trying to kind of rehash the, the workout. And there was some banter with Dave Castro, uh, some banter here with Saxon. Tell me what were the surprising things. Let's start with 21.3. Yeah, I was just uh, surprised on how fast it went to start and a little uncertainty going into the toes bar pull ups and, and then having that big set of 30 bar muscle ups waiting for you. Um, it's good. It, it was not at all what I expected it to be, which that's why I keep coming back for more, I think. I, I loved hearing you talk also before the cameras were rolling about you told yourself internally, take a chance, man. Like, like, how is that different from the past? Yeah, in years past, I'd look at that workout and be like, oh, let's just be smart. Make sure you get a good lift at the end. I'd break things up. Now I'm like, let's go for it. See what happens and die trying. I think Spencer kind of is. Because if I had a little bit of Spencer in me tonight. Yeah, just take the hill. Just charge the hill. Uh, Saxon, you were saying that, man, you, you even thought your pace wasn't that fast, but when the bar muscle-ups came, that's when it got real. Yeah, I mean, I think you're looking at 30 toes to bar, 30 chest to bars. I mean, you know, how we typically train, you're looking more like 75 to 100, so you see those numbers, and you're like, go for it. And then you get to those muscle-ups, you're like, oh, no, what did I just do? <laughs> And then Spencer, uh, well, they say that you're the one who always does come out hot. Uh, was there a point at which you were kind of regretting your pace? I regret the, uh, the complex probably more than anything. I wish I, wish I broke it up early because those muscle ups just creep up on you. And you hold on to those, you get to the complex and you just can't hold on. And, and how surprising was it, like, how shaky the, uh, the legs were after the, the Metcon? It wasn't the legs as much. It was more so, more so my grip more than anything. I just wish I broke everything up from the get-go and just went for it. You guys... It was absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. Congratulations to all of you on your performance. For you all watching from home, don't go away. We're just going to reset the floor, and we're bringing out Easy and Sam Briggs. Remember, they're fighting not just for themselves, but they're working out for a cause. We're going to take a moment as they take the field to learn a little bit more about the Out Foundation and Project Onyx. You're usually welcomed at any gym when you're a world-famous CrossFit Games athlete. But not everyone is Sam Briggs or Easy Muhammad. Briggs and Muhammad are doing all they can to make sure people like them feel as welcome inside gyms as they do. Briggs is working with the Out Foundation. Muhammad co-founded Project Onyx. The goals of the Out Foundation and Project Onyx extend beyond just getting people into gyms, although that is a key first step. Project Onyx is a nonprofit that we created to help the underserved communities, bringing them into the space of fitness and helping them close the health disparity gaps that we have. The ways that we're carrying out our mission of Project Onyx is by going out in, in our communities and bringing in the youth to help them get a better understanding of what health and wellness is in the CrossFit space. The Out Foundation is trying to get inclusivity into sports and physical fitness facilities. I truly believe that sport should be for everybody and you should be able to feel welcome going into a gym and not feel that you have to train at home or you're not welcome somewhere. Project Onyx was born off of diversifying the community, bringing communities together in, in unity and the Open does that same thing so now they're just combining to bring more diversity into the community and then showing Project Onyx, what the community looks like in the fitness world, and showing the fitness world what the community looks like in, in Project Onyx's world. Not everyone is Sam Briggs or Easy Muhammad, but hopefully, sooner rather than later, more people can at least feel like them. Welcome at any gym they go to. The 21.3 Open Announcement is brought to you by Rogue. Don't weaken. And 
strongest. Powering the world of fitness. And the fitness continues as we have yet another matchup between two very capable, very fit athletes. Sean Woodland, Annie Sakamoto joining us now, and Neil Maddox here uh, calling the action. Annie, what did you learn from watching that incredible display that maybe you didn't know about this workout going into it? Well, uh, first of all, there's some good blood in the Panchik family. <laughs> but second of all, I, you know, I, I was amazed that uh, all three of those gentlemen did the first two bar movements unbroken. And it sounds like, you know, it may not have been to their uh, mm -hmm. best decision. Uh, and so it'll be interesting to see what Sam and Elijah do here. Uh, if they do purposely break it up, I don't even know if they heard from those guys that it was grippy and you really saw that with Spencer in the lift. Um, and so it may serve them well to, to break it up a little bit in the beginning. 21.3, the first part of this back to back challenge, the front squats and the thrusters always remain the same. And then the movement on the pull up bar changes from toes to bar to chest to bar pull ups, then to bar muscle ups immediately upon completion of 21.3, 21.4 starts and it's for max load of the following complex of a deadlift, a clean, a hang clean, and one jerk. Sam Briggs and Easy Muhammad set the throw down here in 21.3. And to get us started, let's go down to Rory McKernan. All right, athletes, 10 seconds. Three, two, one, go. 2013 fittest woman on earth, Sam Briggs and Easy Muhammad head to head here. Now, this first part definitely favors Samantha Briggs, but when they get to that heavy barbell, that's when Easy's going to do some work. Right, and I think that's why this is going to be so fun as far as this matchup goes. You know, it's, for Sam, she needs to do well on this first part. Uh, she's not going to win it, uh, you know, in the lifting, not even just in comparison to Elijah, but in comparison to the rest of the world where she could win this workout and literally set a world record uh, is in the first piece of this workout, 21.3. First 15 front squats are down, and now it's on to the 30 toes to bar. Sam Briggs cranking through those at a pretty rapid pace. So if you look at Sam Briggs in her toes to bar, she's kind of doing like a swoosh technique. She pulls her legs down and sweeps them up. And if you look at uh, if you look at Elijah on the right, he's doing more of a longer kip swing. Now her uh, Sam Briggs on the left, she's going to do a more speed and efficient toes to bar versus. Elijah on the right, who actually has an elongated kip. So you're going to see her finish these pretty quick. And I think that was smart for Elijah to break up that first set. You know, he's a bigger athlete, so that's more torque on his grip. And I think it was really smart to break up that first 30 toes to bar. Sam Briggs back to the barbell you saw earlier, the two foundations that these two athletes are representing. Sam Briggs with the out foundation and Elijah Muhammad with Project Onyx. 60 reps is what Samantha Briggs needs to complete. And then she will start her one-minute mandatory rest period. Now Elijah Muhammad is getting back to the barbell for her his 15 thrusters as Briggs is putting the finishing touches on hers. Yeah, Sam's coming in at about the same time as Scott did. Actually, a little bit slower. Scott finished, but she came in at about the same time as all the three brothers who went prior to her. Looks like about 143 for Samantha Briggs. Now Easy Muhammad with five thrusters to go. I mean, as you can tell with Easy pushing uh, pushing this barbell, the barbell is no problem for him. As his, as being a bigger athlete, the gymnastics is going to be the limiter. But when it comes to the barbell, he's going to move that like it's nothing. He's in at 202. Samantha Briggs will start around 243, and Easy will start at 302. And, you know, it, so it'll be interesting to see Sam's time compared to Scott's because uh, it's not like you're going to win this workout in the first piece, right? Like... There is three pieces to it, but it is for an overall time. So you could go so fast on the first piece or even the second piece, and it could cost you on that third piece and your overall time. Yes, uh, yes, you are right on that completely, Annie. But when I'm looking at Sam, she's all about the motor. I mean, like I said, I'm really impressed with her. I was at the CrossFit Games, and like I said early, uh, like I said before, I mean, she just got done with a workout and came in the backstage and was riding the bike curve at a pace, at a blistering pace. And I was like, you just got done working out and you're working out again. It's amazing. Sam Briggs on her second set of 15 front squats. And here comes uh, Easy Muhammad to start his second set of 15 front squats. Then it's back to the pull-up bar for the 30 chest-to-bar pull-ups. And 
I don't know what Samantha Briggs had for breakfast this morning, but whoever cooked it for her deserves a little credit here. Yeah, thank you, Sean. I do know because I made her her breakfast this morning, and I want full credit if she wins this workout. And she is well on her way right now. The 30 chest of our pull-ups for Samantha Briggs, and don't be surprised if these are unbroken. So I, I thought it was pretty interesting when I was watching Sam Briggs right now doing her muscle, uh, her bar muscle-ups, or sorry, chest of bar pull-ups. If you look, she actually re-grips her hands yep. each and every time when she's doing these bar, uh, these, sorry, chest of bar pull-ups. And I think the purpose of the re-grip is to get her palm on top of that bar so she has a better pull. Well, and there's even a little moment of release, yes. right? Like you, you get to release a little bit of that tension on that grip. She did go unbroken. Yep. And barely looks winded as she is on her second set of 15 thrusters to close out this second round. 120 is the number she's looking to hit. Easy Muhammad, meanwhile, is working on his chest bar pull-ups. He is through 90 of the 180 total reps, so exactly halfway for Easy Muhammad right now. So I'm wondering if Easy's grip is starting to burn out because he's really gripping that barbell. And if, if you notice with Sam, she actually was let, releasing a little bit and re-gripping, and he's really gripping. So I'm wondering if he's feeling his arms blow up a little bit and if that's going to affect him on the bar muscle-ups. Well, Sam Briggs in at about 4.23, and she starts her final one-minute rest period. Easy Muhammad's still on his chest to bar pull-ups. He's got five to go. And don't forget, their time for lifting starts as soon as the, the workout ends, not at that 15-minute cap. So the faster you go, the sooner you lift. So what I'm curious to see right now is when Sam gets to this last round right here, I want to see how, I'm, I'm always impressed when she does muscle-ups, but I want to see how she cycles through these bar muscle-ups this next round. Well, it was really impressive to see Scott do 15 on his first set of bar muscle-ups because I think that is the crux of this workout, especially for the higher-level athletes. It is how few sets can you get those bar muscle-ups done. So Elijah right now, if you saw, he had that little pause on that thruster, and that pause on that thruster actually adds time. So you guys want to try to cycle through those thrusters as best you can. So Briggs gets back to work on her final round. And Easy came in at 527. So he will start at 627 unofficially as Samantha Briggs is on her final set of 15 front squats. And then it's those 30 bar muscle ups for her. I mean, you see Sam right now. Honestly, I wouldn't even think she's 39. I think she, she's moving like she's 29 right now. She's moving so smooth. But not only that, I can't wait to see her get on this barbell or this bar for these Actually, sorry bar muscle ups. I will continue to say it until someone proves me wrong, but she was sent back in time to kill Sarah Connor and just <laughs> decided to hang out and do CrossFit. And no one's proven me wrong yet. Look how high she's catching on this first set of bar muscle ups. Look at the snap down too on her legs when she pops herself up. She just floats up. It's almost like a glide kit, but she's not doing a glide kit. I'm really impressed with Elijah Muhammad. He's not that far behind Samantha Briggs in a workout that really is all about this pull-up bar. 165 is the number that Samantha Briggs needs to hit before going back to the barbell as Easy Muhammad has started his third and final set of front squats. Once again, a look at the foundations that both of these this athletes are representing. She, Project she, Onyx DSM.com for Easy Muhammad and the OutFoundation.org for Sam Briggs. And there, she just did 15 unbroken to open, just like Scott Panchik did. He was able to do all 30 in just four sets, so it'll be interesting to see what kind of numbers Sam holds after that set of 15. The easy is done, meanwhile, as you take a look at Sam Briggs going in the back half of her bar muscle-ups. Easy's done with those first 15 front squats, and now he is back to the pull-up bar for the final time. This is impressive right here with Sam. Her kip, her kip swing on this, on these bar muscle ups, have not changed at all. She caught that dip a little bit lower on that last chest bar, or sorry, bar muscle up. But man, she's moving efficiently. Seven on those. reps to go for Samantha Briggs. If she does, if she does this in just one more set, she will beat Scott Panchik in that she did it in three sets instead of four. Seven reps remain for Samantha Briggs at 165. It's back to the barbell for the final 15 thrusters. And then when she completes those, she will move immediately into 21.4. I think she's going to do it. So she is going to uh, take Scott on those bar muscle ups in fewer sets. But I think, sets. Overall, I think overall time, Scott is a little bit faster. Scott Panchik finished in 7 minutes and 57 seconds. 
Samantha Briggs now on her final set of 15, and then her seven-minute window will open as Easy Muhammad still has his thrusters and some bar muscle-ups remaining. Yeah, I think that chalk break that Sam took, she took a little, a few extra seconds on that chalk break, and by taking a few extra seconds on that chalk break, it actually cost her over in the total time because I believe it, it took about 15 to 20 seconds on that chalk break, and that makes a big difference, guys. So 8.33 for Samantha Briggs unofficially, so 15.33 will be when her window closes for 21.4. Easy Muhammad needs to get to 165 on the bar muscle-ups before moving back for his final 15 thrusters i mean still impressive 39 years old hit 833 did basically toes of bar unbroken chest of bar pull-ups unbroken and then three sets on the bar muscle-ups that's impressive what will be interesting here too is to see how long uh, she waits before she attempts her first lift the panchik brothers all it looked like waited about three minutes they did a couple of deadlifts a couple of squat cleans but before they even committed to their first lift i think about three minutes had passed into their seven minute window the biggest difference a lot of you guys have to look at on 21.4 in the past you were able to have a judge or someone help you load the bar but guess what not this time you're responsible for loading your bar. So that makes a difference. When you're bending over and you're already winded and you're out of breath and you gotta load that bar, it's going to delay your recovery. When it delays your recovery, that's going to affect your lifts. So one thing right here, when you're bent over like this, is cutting off your air circulation. So if there's a way you can find yourself to position yourself where you can open up your lungs and still breathe while you're loading the bar, it's going to make a difference. See, that's when it comes in handy when you're a cyborg and you don't have to run on oxygen. You don't have to breathe. Like <laughs> <laughs> Breathing's overrated. Like the belt that she's wearing there, a little bit of Star Wars theme it looked like for Samantha Briggs. Elijah Muhammad is still looking to get to 165 on the bar muscle ups. And so this is where a lot of these, a uh, lot of the bigger athletes, if you're a 215 plus or 210 plus athlete for a male, uh, it's going to be a little difficult when you get into those later rounds, especially when you're pulling your body weight over that bar. I believe Sam has 155 on the bar. We know she's not known for her strength, uh, absolute strength, but this 155 looks pretty easy so far. First complex is done for Samantha Briggs as she hits her first attempt. I think, uh, especially in this in this round, I, especially I think in this round, you're going to see women who are going to be in the 200s, and I, 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 I believe Elijah when he gets on here, you're going to see a number greater than 315. We have two athletes in two separate workouts now. Elijah Muhammad is still in 21.3. Once he gets to 165, he goes to the barbell that is laying on the ground there and has to complete 15 thrusters at 95 pound, pounds. Samantha Briggs is in 21.4. She has 155 pounds on the board for her first attempt as Easy <laughs> moves back to the barbell for his thrusters. Come on, Easy. Get on that bar, brother. Let's go. He's just buying himself a spot for the lifting. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is playing to your strength, which a lot exactly. of athletes are going to have to figure out a way to do that here because you're, you might... I know people love that heavy barbell, but exactly. they are not going to like what's going on in the first part of this. Nope, and, and, and like you said, I like because it's going to play to two different athletes. And so Sam knew she had to go all out on that first piece because no matter what, even on her best day, she's not going to win the lift. So, so this is the first time that I saw an athlete actually break up the thrusters. So he's doing his thrusters in three sets of five instead of doing it unbroken like every other athlete. And I'm wondering if he's trying to save himself to hit a major lift. 175 now unofficially on the bar for Briggs, and she will hit that. So easy is now done. 12-10 is when he will come in, which means his window for 21.4 will close at 19-10. So here is where the strategy comes in. If you guys are at home, you have those small change plates, throw those bad boys on first. Those plates will add up in the end. Then get some load in get a lift in as you're loading it get a lift in load it get a lift in and then once you have your starting weight go for it if that was 175 that sam just hit that's almost 80 percent of her one rep max clean and jerk which is pretty good considering she's only you know four and a half minutes after that time cap so to already be at 80 percent for a complex super impressive from from samantha now two and a half minutes remaining for her in 21.4 Easy 
putting the blues on right off the bat here, and this is where we knew he would do some damage. <laughs> yep, so he, it looks like he's loading up 225, but he'll probably open up at about 275. That's what, I, what I'm guessing that he's going to start his first lift at. Sam Briggs has two attempts, made 155, made 175, and has two minutes left in her seven-minute window. I'm impressed she's already going again. Looks like 185 pounds unofficially. Now the hang clean is good. And that will count for Sam Briggs. So Easy is still getting ready to hit his first lift. He's actually opening up at 225. So, uh, you know, I'm curious to see what his strategy and what his jumps are after this. Smart thing, though. Look at what he's doing. He's putting on his shirt. Yep. And I can attest yep. to this. It's very smart that he's doing this because especially when you're catching the barbell and the jerk, instead of having a sweaty chest yep. to do a jerk on, he has that he has that shirt right there that can help catch that bar a little bit with that knurling grip on that bar and keep that bar in position when he goes overhead. 225 for Easy Muhammad. Oh. Similar to what the Panchik brothers did. He just he's just kind of warming up. He's getting his nervous system ready. He just wants to feel the weight. Oh, he's going 315. Do I see it? Do I see it? Or is it? Yep, yes. 315. I called it. Someone that was going to open up. That is a big jump. You know, he he's one of those guys who could put up the big weight. So don't be surprised if he can if he does well here that he might sneak and have one of the top 10, if not one of the top performances in 21.4. Sam Briggs stole the show in 21.3, but now uh, Easy Muhammad looking to put on a show of his own, loading up three big wheels here for 315 pounds. Now, what will be impressive, if he power cleans all this stuff versus when we just saw the men squat clean it, that to me is going to be very impressive. Right. And so what's the difference if you guys are at home watching this with a power clean and a squat clean? If you watch Sam Briggs here on the left right here, she has been power cleaning most of these lifts, so she's catching it. You'll see right here, not going into a full squat. She's, so she's above parallel. So I'm curious to see if she's going to go below parallel on this next lift. I think if she makes this lift, she's going to make the whole thing because that jerk seems like oh. no problem. Yep. Just could not get under the bar on that hang that was 195 pounds. But Samantha Briggs, again, started that lift before her window closed. So it would have counted. But she's got to be very happy with 185 pounds unofficially. And now... Elijah Muhammad's going to step up to 315. Big lift right here. He can do it, though. Yep, so right there, guys, he went into a squat clean. So anyone at home, if you're trying to lift those big weights, you got to squat under and catch it. Ooh, good fight. Had to work his way out of a little bit of a jam. And now for the jerk. Wow. Oh, it just couldn't stabilize it. Easy <laughs> Muhammad was under it, but just not enough. If he, if he had completed that lift, he could have just been done. He would have beat Scott Panchik's 311 right there. He could have just called it a day with one lift. Well, the good news is is you can move down. Yes. Once and that's not always the you case. Want. Exactly. We've seen another competition where once you started a weight, you cannot go below right. that. So Easy can figure out what he wants to do here. Plenty of time. 1910 is when his seven-minute window closes. I think what really, well, what set him up for the uh, for the for the first lift was his deadlift. But then on the second clean, he wasn't really set up and he didn't catch in a good position. And when he was coming out of that catch, he was just straining and using way too much energy. And using that much energy took away from his jerk. So when he went and jumped under it, he actually caught it, but he couldn't stand it up. He was just a little bit overextended. Right. So the question is, you know, did, did he waste his ability to actually complete this weight? By, by missing that last lift. And, and yeah. this is where we talk about fans, how, yeah. what an effect they can have as well. Oh. And unfortunately, we, it's relatively quiet in here rather than, other than right. the, uh, the music going on. But when fans get behind you, and you know, both of you know this, when they get behind you in a big lift, it makes a difference. Oh. Huge. Huge. I mean, I still, I still recall, you know, the days over at, uh, in the tennis stadium. And, boy, when you have that, that crowd cheering, you just get this super strength. I can't explain it. It's almost like you become a superhero yeah. on the workout floor. Another attempt at 315 for Easy Muhammad. Everything comes down to that second clean. If he can catch that smooth and explode out of it, he has that jerk. 
Oh, there he is. There He's catching go. in at power. Let's see if he powers again. Oh. Nope. And you know, that's where I think, I, I don't know if you noticed, Scott did almost a hip clean. So after that, that the first clean, uh, he would just drop it off his shoulders right into his hip and go right down. And the way that, that uh, he was able to save some grip strength yep. by doing that hip clean, I think, was huge. Well, the biggest thing is what I loved about what you mentioned about that hip clean is, is that he had speed and efficiency under that bar. He only has 30 seconds before he has to start. Now dropping the weight to 275 pounds so he can get a score on the board. Right. As long as he starts at by 1910, he will be okay. Uh, he'll be able to hit this lift. He's basically, basically taking 40 pounds off the bar. He got this. Easy taking a look at the clock. And he starts before his window closes. So this will be his final attempt. 275 pounds. Easy. Yep. Easy for easy right there. No yep. problem for Easy Muhammad at 275 after making two unsuccessful attempts at 315 pounds. One thing I bet he would probably want to take that back and probably open up at 275 and then work himself back up. So it's a lesson learned. Well, and this is one of those workouts, right, where uh, you could do the first piece really well and then blow it on the second piece. Now, if you decide to redo... You do have to redo both pieces. It's not like you get to take your 21.3 mm -hmm. good score and marry it with your second 21.4 score. So, you know, if Easy decides to redo this, he's going to have to do that whole first piece again, too. A great effort from Samantha Briggs and Easy Muhammad. Would have been fun to see Easy hit that 315, but <laughs> 275 still really impressive. And to do it in that short of a period after you just failed your second lift is probably even more impressive. After failing 315 twice, right? And you think of the effort that went into, uh, he basically cleaned 315 three of four times. <laughs> right, yes. <laughs> Let's take a look back at the first part of this, 21.3. And we knew that Samantha Briggs was going to do extremely well, and she did. Uh, never really was challenged by easy because, look, this was not what easy wanted to get to right uh she just looked so relaxed the whole time it was like neil said like she wasn't even breathing heavy through any of it but i'm really impressed with elijah you know the first two pieces he he hung pretty tight to samantha it really came down like we said to the bar muscle ups i mean it's still impressive she got those uh, she got those bar muscle ups in three sets she went unbroken on the first two uh, uh, first two gymnastics movements and then on the third one she got it in three sets so lay, folks at home if you guys are watching this if you're watching this at home you got you got a good outline of what it's going to take in order to take that top spot sam was able to break up the bar muscle ups but still put up an incredible time of eight minutes 33 seconds easy muhammad came in 12 minutes and 10 seconds and easy much slower on the bar muscle up looking to conserve some energy before he got to 21.4 and sam briggs just rifling through those final 15 thrusters to take the matchup yeah, I so think results for 21.3 sam briggs eight minutes 33 seconds and elijah muhammad at 12 minutes 10 seconds and then we got into 21.4 and that's where elijah muhammad was trying to put on a show as samantha briggs started at 175. well if you look at both of these athletes both of these athletes took uh it, well elijah later took a power a power clean approach because i don't know if their legs were too smoked from the front squats and thrusters but i'm just curious to see how it built up and i would love to talk to him afterwards to see what the effects were yep. Briggs started at 155, missed that. That was her successful lift at 175, and then moving on to 185 pounds, and this would be her last successful attempt as she did make a run at 195, but was unable to complete the hang clean. But I'm super impressed to see Sam hit over 80% of her one rep max clean and jerk, uh, you know, after 30 chest to bar, 30 toe to bar, 30 bar muscle ups, and 90 squats overall. So super impressive from her. I, she's got to be happy with that score. Easy Muhammad made two attempts at 315 and failed at different points during each attempt. 
Yeah, so when you look here, nice smooth on the deadlift, good on the catch, he stood up, but then right here on the second catch, he kind of fumbles with it a little bit, and then you look at his leg position, he used a little bit of extra energy. Now when he goes to do this jerk, he gets a big dip, he jumps punch under, but he's a little extended and can't close it out. This was his second attempt at 315. Well, the same thing happens. He's smooth on that deadlift. He power cleaned it this time, but then on the third lift, he kind of got weak in that catch position. He wasted a little bit of energy trying to regrip it and go into that hang and then failed on that lift. And finally, with very little rest, 275 is good. What I liked about this lift, he said, okay, I did a squat. I'm going to just power my way through this. Squat cleaned it on the last one, and then here he just popped it up easy. 275 will be the final score for Easy Muhammad. Samantha Briggs comes in at 185 pounds. Let's go back down to the competition floor with Rory McKernan. All right, Sam, you're joking, but when Easy was uh, offloading, he was going for a lighter weight, you were like, no, no, don't do it. Why? Stay heavy, stay heavy. And then I could have beaten him in the, in the lift. <laughs> could have gone two for two against Easy Muhammad. Um, tell me what was kind of sneaky about this or what was exactly as you expected for people who are about to take it on. Um, it's, it, it is what it is. It's like two separate scored events, so you have to push on the first one. Uh, and then you also don't get any benefit of pushing on the first one because you still only get that seven minutes. Right. If it had been 15 minute time cap and you get to rest the remainder of the time, then that would have been like a whole different like ball game. But this was you had to push hard and then go straight into the lift. See, I wanted you to be like, no, no, it's not that bad, don't worry. Uh, you'll enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. Uh, before we said three, two, one, go, you went over to Sam. You said, hey, for what it's worth, this is an honor for me. And that was a really cool moment for me. Can you tell people at home what you meant by that? Yeah, um, she's a champion. She's won the CrossFit Games. And training with Froning, I've been able to see what it takes for people to achieve that status or achieve that. And it was just an honor to share the floor with someone that has put in that much work and has uh, excelled that well in a, pretty much the toughest sport that we can find, right? No doubt. And uh, look, we knew that you were excited to get your hands on the barbell. Yeah. Would you do anything differently or did you like putting on the show? No, I, I never play it easy. I'm going to go for it. And whenever the rules are allowed you to take down weight, I'll look at that clock and be like, OK, maybe I should go down. But I'm coming out the gate hot when it's, when it's time to lift every time. Love it. It was really fun to watch and really cool that you guys brought attention to uh, causes that mean so much to you guys. So thank you both for being here. Yes, thank you. All right, my friends, it's done on the competition floor, but it's far from over in just a few moments. We're going to bring you some tips and tricks for your 21.3 and 4 workout. Uh, that's from the GM of Education, Nicole Carroll. And then, of course, we're going to follow that with the cool down show where we get to talk to Sam and Easy a little bit more, as well as the three Panchik brothers and Scott and uh, Dave Castro with some of your questions. So stick around. We'll be right back. Hey everyone, here we go with some tips and strategies for the final workouts of the 2021 CrossFit Open. The key to this one is creating a solid game plan going in and then making sure you stick to it. When you're planning, focus on how you'll minimize rest during 21.3 and then how you can prevent having to make too many decisions and wasting time during 21.4. The setup and warm up are extremely important for this one. You're going from light loading and metabolic stress immediately into a heavy lift. You have to use your warm up to prep for this. Get a feeling for the lifting complex and grease the groove really, really well for the clean and jerk. Warm up a squat clean, a power clean, and whatever kind of jerk you'll be using in the workout. At a minimum, you should come out of your warm up having hit the heaviest weight that you are 100% confident you can hit in the workout. You should also be set up for at least three lifts. One that you can definitely hit, one that is challenging but doable, and one that's a stretch even on a good day, but maybe, just maybe, the magic of the open will carry you through it. Before you start the workout, have all the change plates and all the increments you might need ready and nearby. For 21.3, the minute rest allows you to catch your breath a little bit, but it's not long enough for a full recovery, so you're definitely going to be managing your breathing throughout this one. The front squats are right after the rest and the thrusters are right before it. So mentally, you should be able to push yourself here and maybe even go unbroken on these. The gymnastics will add up and they increase in complexity and strength demand. Unless you're a gymnastics ninja, I recommend using small sets with short rests right from the start. 
When you get to 21.4, you will be breathing hard and all the muscles you need for the complex will be fatigued. I had to rest about two minutes and 30 seconds before my first attempt, but I was still able to get three attempts in. By the second attempt, I started recovering a bit and I actually felt good to go for it on the third attempt. In the complex, you may be able to power clean the first clean, but you will very likely need to use a squat clean for that second hang clean. Be prepared for this, and if you have a split jerk, I recommend using it. Final workout of the 2021 CrossFit Open, and it's a doozy. Give this one everything you've got, and thank you so much for joining us this year. Now go get them, and good luck. The CrossFit Games are returning to Madison, Wisconsin, and you can be there to see all the action. Ticket packages are on sale now. Choose between festival only or a festival plus coliseum package to ensure that you are on hand to witness the best athletes in the world compete for the title of fittest on earth. Be part of the celebration live. Head to games.crossfit.com to purchase your tickets today. Welcome into the Cool Down Show presented by Romwald. We saw Sam Socks there, joined by Sam Briggs and Easy Muhammad. Just real quick, 21.3, right in your real house. How do you feel now? Yeah, no, it was really good. Uh, you obviously want to push hard because the two separate squad events. Uh, so I tried to kind of play to my strengths more on the like pull-up bar. Uh, the longer legs, I'm not as fast at the squat, so I just tried to stay like calm and steady yeah. and not jack my heart rate up too much so that I could do the first two sets of the bar um, unbroken and then sensible sets on the on the bar my slope. Yeah, easy. Turn to 1.4 in your wheelhouse. You tried to go for 315. You finished with 275. How do you feel now? Ah, oh, it's good, man. Just shooting for the stars, man. Got a barbell. It's like, why not go for it? And then especially when the rules allow you to drop down in weight, it's always worth it to try to get it out the gate in the beginning and then drop down if you need to just to lock a score in. Yeah. Sam, you've mentioned that you want to qualify for the games as an individual into the 40s. You'll be 40 next year. Just talk about how you use this experience that you have throughout the years to continue to be successful. Uh, it just fuels my like passion to keep on going. Like today was just a phenomenal event. It was awesome to push against Easy. Uh, awesome to watch the younger Panchecks coming up to chase Scott. And it just makes me like reaffirms my desire to keep competing. Yeah, yeah. Keep that motivation going. Uh, easy for you. Training's a little bit different. You're not trying to qualify for the games anymore. You've got Project Onyx and you're a family man. Just talk about what training's been like for you. Yeah, just one a day, trying to fit it in when I can. Uh, I knew this time was going to come when the kids are in sports and doing other things and I was going to take a lot of my time. So I just knew it was coming. It's here. And then, of course, I didn't know about Project Onyx that we were going to have to start something like this. But now that that's here, those are my my um, obligations and the things that I'm more passionate about right now. Yeah, awesome job with that. And Sam, final question for you. Uh, Ramwad and Outwad uh, have partnered together with a mat. Just talk about the mat. Yeah, I think it's a really cool opportunity. Uh, everybody likes to do mobility. So Ramwad have an awesome mobility mat and now they're uh, helping support the foundation. So it's cool to get it out there. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Now, if you want to support Outwad, go to the outfoundation.org or you can purchase the Outwad by Robwad mat at romwad.com slash gives. All the profits will go to the Out Foundation. Now, stick around because continuing on with the cool down show, we'll have Ro, who's sitting down with Steve Castro and the three Panchik brothers. Welcome back, friends. Thank you so much for being here. This is The Cool Down Show. We've got Dave Castro. We've got all three Panchik brothers and uh, some questions from you all coming in just a moment. But Dave, I want to start with you. Uh, you snuck in a fourth one, <laughs> but it feels different to have an open with only four workouts, but three weeks. Um, now that you've tried it, 
You've seen how it laid out. Um, how do you like it? What's your reaction? I'm a huge fan of the three-week open at this point. Uh, we'll take feedback from the community, from the athletes, from everyone involved before we totally commit to it. But uh, I think it's something we should definitely entertain and keep in our quiver for potentially using in the future because the, the five-week was such a, um, I don't want to say a drag or a burden, but it's a lot of work on the affiliates and the athletes. And this 3-1 is just hyper-focused and um, right there. Yeah. So I'm a huge fan of it. Yeah, cool. And you can still get an adequate test. Yeah, exactly. And I, think, and I don't think, I know we still got an adequate test. And the right people will advance to the next stage, and then the next stage will advance the correct people to the semis, and then the semifinals will get the right people to the games. Love it. Love it. Uh, Scott, I'm going to have you tell this story <coughs> briefly, and then Spencer and, and uh, Saxon can jump in as well. But for those who have not been following the sport for quite as long, you guys have a really amazing story of how your family came to CrossFit. And now, of course, these guys have grown up, and they're amazing athletes. But can you kind of tell us that? There was, there was, there was an accident. There was a, an incident. And that led us to where you are today. Yeah, we um, got into CrossFit after these guys were in a, a bad accident, they were hiking through the woods and um, took a tumble down a, a cliff and one went down to help the other one and he ended up falling and um, they just asked for cell phones that year and they used the GPS to find them. I think you guys were what, how old? 11, 11 12. 11, 12 years old and uh, it was, uh, CrossFit was a way that we came back from that. Uh, I was actually recovering from reconstructive knee surgery. They were coming back from their accident and we started at CrossFit Pittsburgh. That was our first uh, affiliate that we went to uh, all summer long. We'd pile in my, my dad's truck and we'd go down there and I was trying to come back to play football. These guys were trying to knock the ball out of my hands when we were running 400 meter <laughs> laps, but they started on PVC pipes and uh, you know, we were dot commers. Uh, we'd go on, on CrossFit.com every day and that was the workout that we did at CrossFit Pittsburgh. And uh, it's just really, amazing to look back at where we started and then to be here today with these guys um they're obviously not those same little kids throwing around pvc pipes but uh yeah if, if people had not amazing. seen your instagram post yet the one uh, the other day where you're, you're holding them as i mean how old must have they been they were probably right around that age right around 11 yeah. 12 years old yeah crazy and now to see where you guys are now it's, it's fantastic um I've, I could do this all day, but we do have questions coming from the audience at home. So Nikki Brazier is, is with the global audience. Uh, Nikki, what do you got for the athletes and Dave? Well, we've got Jason Croxton coming to us live from Bath in the UK, where he trains at CrossFit Bath. And Jason has a question for Scott Panchik. Yeah, hi, Scott. You said going against your brothers in something like this, it's just, you know, blinders on and go. But of course, 21.3 forced you twice to take a minute's rest. So I just wanted, do the blinders stay on or, or what happens in your mind during that minute of rest? That minute of rest goes by pretty quick. I was just trying to catch my breath. I definitely, when I, I finished the, the, each part, I'd kind of look over to see where I was at. And that gave me a good gauge of, you know, where I wanted to be in the next round. Yeah, I, was I, I wasn't sure if like somebody could come back from a deficit once you actually got the lead, but these guys really did close the gap, and it was a close race towards the end. Absolutely. So that was fun to watch. Um, and then you just got to add to that what you said to me at the end was that these guys are going to be a little bit mad at you for the next couple of days, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> All right, let's go back to Nikki. Nikki, uh, let's get another question, please. All right, so... Yep, so we have Carly and Kira here from Westchester, Pennsylvania, where they train at CrossFit Explode, and they have a question for Saxon and Spencer. Oh, they were in Westchester, but we had a little bit of a technical uh, issue. So <clears throat> now that you guys have, have settled for just a moment, and uh, let's start with the thought. Is there a little bit of animosity? Does this one, does this one stick with you? Like, you know, how, how long does it take for you guys to kind of get over that, man, I got beat by whoever it is? Oh. I, I don't think you ever get over it, <laughs> um, but now we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We'll um, look back. I think there's a lot of things that could be changed, and uh, we'll see if we give it another go. I'm thinking. I'm thinking we probably will. <laughs> um, Saxon, can I ask you about coaching? I know that you guys, um, you and Sa you and Spencer both use the same coach, correct? Correct. And that's Facundo, who's a, you know a dear friend of mine. Love to hear that you guys have incorporated him into your training. What are what are kind of the key ingredients that he's added to? Yeah, he's uh, really given us a different uh, perspective on training. Um, we've trained with Scott for a while growing up, and then we took over programming for ourselves for a little bit, 
and then he gave us a workout to test and it just crumbled us and I was like, okay, this is awesome. Um, so I think it's really important to expose yourself to different types of training. Um, that way your body never adapts to something. I think if you train the same way year after year, I mean, you're prone to be getting the same results. So I think the more you can change that and vary that, uh, I think the more you can kind of expand your knowledge in CrossFit and your physical capabilities. Yeah, I love that, man. Wise words for, for a young man. And uh, it sounds like we're back online. So uh, Nikki, we got another question from the audience, it sounds like. That's right, we are back. We have Lisa and Carl Smith out of the south coast of England from across the pond where they train at CrossFit Iron Duke. And they have a question for Dave Castro. Hi Dave, um, we just wondered, we, want, we were really interested in programming. Um, obviously you've had a huge amount of experience doing what you do now, but given how these athletes improve year on year and their kind of superhuman abilities, do you ever program something and get it absolutely wrong? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and I think at the games, there was something that we programmed uh, two or three years ago where it was a little too aggressive for the time cap we put in place. And really what we make mistakes on or have made mistakes on, the, the events are capable of being done, but sometimes we put these artificial time caps to keep the event moving and, and flowing. And sometimes the workouts are too aggressive for that. So there's two or three years ago, there was a final we did where only two or three people finished that event. Uh, and that was a mistake. So sometimes we want half the field to finish it. Sometimes we want all the field to finish it. Sometimes we do want two or three people to finish. But at that time, that wasn't the intent for that one. And um, one, one reason that happened was our tester was so good at it. We got, you know, skewed information. We needed to test it a little more to really get the right data for applying a uh, time cap. Uh, can I flip that on its head? Uh, that, that was our last question from the audience. But um, does it mean so like, for example, it was a 2012 or 14 that we did the legless and yep. one woman finished it. Does that mean it's a mistake? No, it depends on what our intent is at that stage with the I don't remember then which event are we talking about with the one it was thrusters and legless rope, rope climbs. Yeah, that was probably a mistake. Okay. <laughs> um, probably wanted more women to finish on the on the uh, on the one I was referring to that that was not the intent but there are some workouts especially at regionals we would do events where only one or two people would finish in the time cap and that 100% was by design to push the to push them and push to try to just highlight the few who could yeah um, we got to close out I'm gonna start with uh, Spencer and Saxon and I'd, I would love to hear from you guys you're really just kind of on the launch pad right so what are the aspirations for your career when you when you're sitting in your rocking chair one day like looking back what do you what do you want to accomplish um i think i think both of us want to win the games and um that's something we're going to keep striving for only one can win at a time though oh <laughs> it could be a tie <laughs> um no i would say it's really fo I, like i got inspired to do crossfit whenever i was young just watching a lot of the um like people like Rich, Scott, and a lot of these guys, whenever like our bodies were still growing, um, and whenever I got to meet those guys for the first time and watch them compete, that was something that I always wanted to do. Um, so I just want to be able to step into that position to be able to inspire people coming up in the sport. I love that. Um, Scott, for you, um, I want to hear about this year in particular, and I would like to hear before that, like the, the most proud moments of your career, like what really jumps out as you kind of look back, you got your brothers who have come up and yeah. here you are with an amazing career. Uh, what, are the, what are you most proud of? Yeah, um, I'm most proud that I'm still standing here, to be honest. Yeah. At, at 33, to be here. Um, this is a moment, even just today, to, to have these guys by my side doing an open workout announcement. Um, it's Like I said before, it's something that we've envisioned and dreamed of when we first started training together. And what I'm looking forward to is taking this momentum that we have here and taking it through the rest of the season with these guys. It's, it's going to be a special year. I can, I can tell you that. Love it. Love it. I will uh, take your word for it, but just this performance alone tells me that you tell the truth. Uh, thank you all for being here, Dave. Thanks for an amazing season so far. It's been a blast. And uh, thank you all at home for watching. We're glad that you in the UK and around the world got to join us as well with the earlier broadcast. We want to thank our sponsors for 21.3. That's Romwad. Go to romwad.com to learn more and unleash your calm. Of course, this will be the end of the Open, but it's just the beginning of the season. The quarterfinals, semifinals, and of course, the CrossFit Games are just around the corner. Tickets are on sale now for the CrossFit Games. We hope that you enjoy 21.3 and 4. We will see you here on games.crossfit.com for the rest of the season. Enjoy the workouts, and we'll see you on the leaderboard.